judge a person not by what they accomplished, but what they had to overcome for their accomplishment. People that are hungry have zero excuses for not pursuing their dreams. And they come back again and again and again. They operate like Willie Jolly, who said that a setback is a setup for a comeback. I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. I'm training people to get into their greatness, to begin to develop the courage to pursue dreams beyond their comfort zones. Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. There's never a shortage of opportunities. It's just a shortage of thinking. Because some things are taught and some things are caught. When I was in the fifth grade, they put me back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade. I failed again in the eighth grade. I have no college training. So being identified and labeled as DT, the dumb twin, it, it gave me a, a lot of things to overcome. And so there was no one to dispute what was said about me and I bought it. Even if you are told a lie, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. You hear it often enough, it becomes your reality. Perception not challenged becomes real for you. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. So if you can track failure, you can also track success. You have greatness in you. I don't know you, but here's what I know based upon my own experience. You have greatness in you, that you have the ability to do more than you could ever begin to imagine. You have greatness in you. There's a presence in each and every one of us that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only guide you will ever have or hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. When you recognize your greatness, no one will ever pull your strings. You are different. You were created on purpose, with a purpose, to manifest that purpose through you. You will never exercise authority and dominion over your life until you exercise authority and dominion over what you are not. Most people go through life living the lie that has been told about them. There's something in you that's greater than your circumstances. There's something in you that's greater than the adversities that you're facing. In life, you're either in a problem, just left one, or headed toward one. You have greatness in you. When you're pursuing your greatness, you live from a place of the willingness to live life courageously, to be willing to take chances, to become a risk taker, to make impact, to go beyond believing, to knowing, to lean not unto your own understanding, to feel within yourself there's some cause, there's something that's bigger than me, but I'm never alone in facing this. There's a presence that will never leave me nor forsake me. And that when you step into that place, more of thee, less of me, that, that there's a, a place where we can go within ourselves. There are things that we can accomplish, things that we can do that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor is in the heart of mankind what God has in store for us. When we surrender life to me, when you're pursuing your greatness, you find something that you love, that you surrender to that, that that something gives you life, and that you turn yourself over to that and allow yourself to be used by life. That to me is what greatness is. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and I was pondering about my life, am I going to beat this? Mm. And I was reading his words for comfort and he said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them mm. as they cross over. But imagine being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. 
You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. And there they are looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. Mm. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what gifts will die with you? As I face inevitable death, what in the meaning and purpose of my life that will not be undone or destroyed when I'm gone? My goal now, we learn, we earn, we pass it on. We should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. I think it's important that people find something that gives their life a sense of meaning and value that drives them, that becomes their magnificent obsession. Because we live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential, we go to our graves never knowing who we really are. How do we develop a sense of belief? What I'm hearing you say is belief is one of the most important things we can have It is major. It's an ongoing process. I encourage people to read at a minimum of 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day to program your mind and, and all of us can do that. We can go to the library and check out books. When I think about Art Mandino who wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World, he was on the verge of committing suicide, went wow. to the library, read the book Think and Grow Rich and his life turned around. Your mindset, your diet and positive relationships. Giving yourself a healing, nurturing environment strengthens your immune system and allows you to stay here longer and do your great work. Mm. So you have to program yourself or your mind will be programmed. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. You've got to become a risk taker. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? When you find something that you love, you will study it. Something that you love that becomes not just confident, but you will become competent on that. I pour myself into it. I lose myself into it because it's not about me, it's about the audience. Ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and don't stop until you get it. I tell people, you're going to face tough times, but I affirm no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. It's a live a life of contribution. Decide that you are going to live your life in such a way as Horace Mann said, you should be ashamed to die until you made some major contribution to humankind. And I want to find other people who have that kind of magnificent obsession, who have that kind of conviction about their lives, who want to make that kind of mark of their lives. Mm. Can I, with the time that I have left, amplify and train and multiply voices of hope and create a better world. We'll have enough time to do that. And we all have an expiration date. So live your life from a place of love.